John Magaro is one of the stars of this year's new Kelly Reichardt film, First Cow. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with John. Um, and I want to just start off with something fun. You know, people say that it's difficult in the business to work with children and with animals. Um, and you are sharing the screen with the titular First Cow. Um, how was your experience working with her? Well, that's an utter lie. My two favorite scenes were the 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 scene with the baby in the bar and the scenes with the cow. So I mean, we've defied that cliche. No, but but Evie was actually really. She's a, I mean just an amazing animal, and those were some of my favorite scenes to film. Those scenes at night when it's just her and me sitting there talking. Um, and there's just something about being next to an animal that size. It almost puts you at ease when they're so peaceful and calm. Um, and just, you know, it was a fast bond, mostly, mostly motivated by bribes and treats. But um, it paid off in a, in a really lovely moment when we come out of the Chief Factor's house, which is Toby Jones. And he, he starts nuzzling up against me, which was unplanned. But after a week of feeding her treats and getting to know her she she seemed like she was connected so that was nice that was nice yeah well uh speaking to how you got involved with the film i mean kelly reichardt's status within the kind of independent film world was um i imagine one of the draws for you to do the film and i'm wondering how she kind of lived up to any expectations you might have had just from working with her yeah i mean i've been a fan of kelly's for a while um, so when I, I got to read this script, um, you know, I, I was pretty sure it was going to be something I wanted to be a part of, but then just on the initial read, um, rarely do you get a script that's so fleshed out and so clear and, and the, the vision is so precise. And it also is just so beautiful that it brings you to tears by the end on just a read, uh, you know, from the words on the page. Um, so yeah, I knew, you know, I wanted to, to be involved with this and, and on the initial read, I, I also saw it almost more as a Meeks cutoff. I was surprised how intimate it became in the shooting, uh, in the style that Kelly and Chris Blavel, our, our, our cinematographer chose. Um, and obviously I think that it, it was a pleasant surprise. Um, I, I you know, Kelly, there's a reason she has such respect in this industry and among independent film followers and fans. Um, she has, you know, she's a professor at Bard of, of film. She has a supreme knowledge and, and a true appreciation of cinema in all its forms. And it shows when she works. Um, she comes in with a vision that's extraordinarily clear. She can motivate a team. She creates a warm and, and collaborative set. Um, and that's why I think people continue to go back to her. You know, a lot of our, our key people involved on the crew and production end, as well as actors like Lily Gladstone and, and other people continue to go back to her because, because she is you know, just absolutely amazing to work with and inspiring. Well, speaking to uh, the set, uh, I'm much of the film is spent in the woods, you know, in the in the wilderness. And I'm curious whether that whole process of working with your hands and living in that environment was something that came naturally to you, or if you kind of had to work to really get into the mindset of this guy who is living off the land. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I'm more of a city guy. Um, my camping experience is, uh, you know, middle school Jewish summer camp, uh, where it wasn't, it was very, <laughs> it was very cush, cushy. And um, so, no, uh, not that I'm against camping, but I just haven't done a lot of it. So, yes, this was a new experience for me. I do, I do really enjoy cooking. That is a way that I basically unwind and meditate, uh, you know. Um, most of the time. So, so I do have, you know, an affinity for, for cooking. Um, but you know, this cooking is a very different type. This world is a very different thing. Um, so we were really lucky in this, we had, um, a brief kind of 
Lewis and Clark frontier boot camp type thing where Orion and I went out into the woods outside of Portland for four days, three nights, something like that. And, uh, and got to set into that, that world and our skills where I was cooking and using the, the, the tools and, and we were hiking and foraging and, and skinning, you know, roadkill and, making cordage and making traps so all these things I, I think it was nice to have those experiences beforehand so we felt a little more comfortable because Orion is also a city city boy too so it made us feel a little more comfortable stepping into this this world where where you know you kind of have to be a master or a jack of all trades in a way and the the character you play, Cookie, uh, we sort of gradually learn more about him and his past as the film goes on. I mean, we we do kind of get a sense of who he is kind of right off the bat, just from the way he interacts with other people and with animals, especially, mm -hmm. and his kind of sensitivity. Uh, but how do you, how did you find your way into who Cookie really was, kind of inherently during that prep work? Yeah. Um... I mean, initially, uh, so much of it is on the script. Like I said, Kelly and, and Jonathan Raymond painted a really clear picture. Um, not a lot was changed from the script to, to what it, we, we see on screen. Um, so in, in, instinctually, you, you see that this limited speech he has and this more reactionary um, w way of operating that that automatically puts you starts to get your mind going into that direction and then you notice that the only one he really opens up to is a cow that's probably the most he talks ever so then you understand his connection with nature and animals um then for me personally to sort of get that rhythm uh i asked kelly to send me some stuff just things that were inspiring her she sent me some music some artwork some books uh but, but for me the most helpful thing was she sent me these cookbooks from primarily the Lewis and Clark expedition, kind of what they ate during that uh, journey. Um, and for a month or two, I forget exactly how long I had before we started, roughly like a month and a half about, uh, I found myself cooking my way through these books. And, and with that style of cooking and baking, there's just a tremendous patience and, and, and quiet to it and precision. Um, and doing that, you know, day after day for, for a few weeks, just kind of, you know, let that quiet and let that weight wash over me. Um, so, so I found that sort of coming into the performance. And then I've said this before, but the final component is being in that wilderness, this, this untouched, unspoiled um, forest of, of Oregon. There's just something about it. That, that's so awe inspiring that can't, can't, you know, you can't stop from, being quiet, you know, it makes you just sort of sit back and take it in. Well, one of the key elements of the film that I think people have really responded to is the relationship between Cookie and Kig Lou, played by Orion Lee. Um, and they and they form such a close bond. Uh, what do you think it is that they kind of see in each other that makes that bond feel so natural i mean you know I, uh on the surface the most basic thing would be the need for connection they both are aliens in this world um king lu primarily because of his ethnicity um is never going to be accepted into that world um and, and cookie because of his way of being his not being macho not being tough not being outwardly alpha uh being passive these are things that are going to make it hard for him to be accepted into that world so they're both looking for a connection but but at the real core of it i think you could say they're almost soulmates you know these are people who for whatever ethereal reason are drawn to each other um thankfully king lou is more gregarious and draws you know cookie in because i don't know if cookie would you know, he obviously helps him in the beginning um, because of kindness and, and, and care for a fellow human. Um, but King Lou is the one who, who kind of coaxes Cookie along to begin to open up more. 
Um, but the relationship, you know, may start out of necessity, but it grows and develops into something that is supremely profound and deep and meaningful. And I think that's why people have been responding to the movie to watch such a genuine friendship in such a tough, turbulent world, you know, survive. Um, yeah. Uh, did did you and Orion do any kind of special prep work to make sure that the two of you were kind of, you know, very comfortable with each other? Uh, I mean, uh, the boot camp was was kind of it. You know, unfortunately, you know, with the independent films, you don't really have a lot of time. So we showed up, you know, about a week before we started shooting, and thankfully we did have that that frontier camp or whatever you want to call it. Uh, to get to know each other a little bit. It certainly wasn't enough time, um, but we got started to understand each other's rhythms and understand how each other was. Um, and fortunately, we're watching the friendship develop on screen. So over the weeks of filming, we continued to get to know each other. We continued to bond. We continued to become friends. So, so not only are you watching King Lou and Cookie's friendship developing, you are in a way watching mine and Orion's friendship develop. Hmm. Well, also uh, Toby Jones plays yeah. a pretty fun character in this as a uh, chief factor who owns the cow. Uh, I mean, what was he like? Someone who's been in the business for quite a while now. It's for, it's, you know, playing off of him as an actor. Yeah. I mean, Toby Jones is, remarkable I, we've watched him for years deliver stunning performances uh hilarious performances heartfelt beautiful performances just vulnerable perform like everything and he commands respect and and you know as an actor when you step on set with him i think one of the first things we shot was um uh where i give him the cake and he delivers this beautiful speech about london and watching it just you're watching a master work you know the way he delivers that on the first take you see why he is toby jones um so it was really a gift to have him on set it was br too brief but it, you know getting the chance to play off of him was, was a lot of fun well, you mentioned earlier you're kind of a, a city boy but you know the, you know the film is set in the 1800s but considering how much the film is set in nature, I think it's a bit easier to sort of transport yourself there. And, and I'm curious just how conscious you are when you're doing, you know, period pieces like this of contextualizing yourself within the time mm. period and whether you just kind of immerse yourself in that world and almost go full method with it, or if you're just able to switch back and forth and, you know, walk off and be on your cell phone or something. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, that's hard. It's hard to say because because I don't know if I'm fully aware of it. it would, that's almost a better question to ask someone else who's <laughs> observing me. You know, I, I like to think I, I can switch, but but I also know that there's an element that you that I hang on to throughout the entire shoot. Um, there's just a component that that keep, you keep with you constantly. Um, and you operate, you do operate a little bit differently, no matter what, or I think I do, no matter what, whatever job I'm working on. Um, but, but maybe, maybe it's about, it's sort of like, you just sort of dive in. Maybe I do put blinders on in a way and I, I try not to think about it. I just try and be immer immersed in it and, and, and go on the journey and see what happens. But it's, it's, I, that's a terrible answer, but it's really, it's really, it's really hard to answer. Um, I'd be curious to hear what other people would have to say about how I, how I am, but, but I, I don't really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first cow, it's already showing up in these end of the year critics awards for, you know, top 10 lists and certain awards. And you received a nomination from the Gotham awards for Best Actor. The film was also uh, nominated for Best Feature. Orion Lee is in the Breakthrough Actor category and the screenplay is nominated. Uh, what was your reaction to hearing that news of not only your nomination, but of the film 
already really making a big splash in such a big way. I mean, it's just been it's been really nice um, because we came out so it's been such a long journey for us. You know, we we played Telluride two years ago now. Um, Wait, right two years because it was a year and then it was canceled this year so um and then we came out in march and then we had a pandemic which has been terrible so it got pulled out of the theaters and and you know I, I i maybe i'm a bit of a pessimist but i thought you know i was obviously we're very proud of it it's a beautiful film but we kind of let it be what happened it happened so to see now it's starting to get recognized has it's amazing i think especially for Kelly, it's deserved. Um, but yeah, I was shocked when I, we got the call and we got the four you know, nominations, we, categories we were up for at the Gotham's. That was, and, and for me especially, I was really shocked um, just to be included in a company of such tremendous actors. Um, yes, I mean, it's, it's it, you know, it's again, it's cliche, but it is an honor. Um, I'm just so it's just really soul and heartwarming to to see people respond to the film this way because it is a film with a lot of heart and a lot of care that's been put into it and, and I, I think Kelly has been underappreciated for far too long and I really think she deserves it so um, not to say oh there's so many other films out there that are absolutely brilliant but but I, I do think Kelly's been overlooked a lot in the past, so it's lovely to see her being recognized, especially with all the, the effort and, and care she puts into it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, last thing, uh, last minute or two here. I have to say, this is one of those movies that features food that really just makes you want to try it yourself i mean we have cookie making these biscuits and everyone who tries them is just so rapturous about how amazing these biscuits are so simple question while we finish here were they as good as advertised <laughs> well i'm gonna say this right it's been funny to see these articles come out like recipes for the oily cakes like this has become a thing and like uh, twitter feeds about uh, look, I'm gonna eat these oil. Like it's it's funny. It's really it's it's surprising, but I get it. You know, I'm a big fan of watching things and then like getting the food that you see on the screen because there's something about that. It makes you it makes you hungry. You want to connect with the film in that way. Um, now the oily cakes on set. <laughs> um, so the, when I'm making them, that scene, you know, I am making fresh ones. So those ones I imagine were pretty good. Those probably tasted okay. But m most of the people were eating, you know, like things that had been sitting around <laughs> probably for three days. And so they had to sit there and eat them and act. And even Toby had a few of those. And, and he makes them look amazing. But, but I can't imagine they were very good. Now me, I never ate them on that day. I didn't touch those ones. I did have one at the, when I made them at the, at the frontier camp I, we went on. I, when I made them, then I tried them, and they're good. They're like they're they're like a beignet. That's what the you know a beignet from in New Orleans. Yeah, kind of like a Cafe du Monde beignet, or maybe mixed with like a funnel cake. But you know, it's dough and sugar and milk, so and fries. Go wrong? So how could it be yeah. bad? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, John, for joining me today. It was a blast. Yeah, this is um, great. And for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews just like this and head to goldderby.com to make your Oscar predictions.